Welcome, welcome! It's Mud Dog with the Texas Space Navy bringing you another Star Citizen video. And today's video is all about the Anvil Liberator. This is the new light carrier from Anvil Aerospace. This is something that they introduced to us for the first time at CitizenCon this last Saturday. Uh, I know it's been out for a few days, but uh, just now being able to get around to making a video, my work has been kicking my butt here lately. So you can see they have a good four of these hanging out here with a few fighters here in support. Looks like a gladiator and a hornet on top. Uh, you can see it's only geared for a certain amount of ships uh, to carry. Uh, we're going to kind of go into more of the specifics here as we go. So I just wanted to... Uh, you know, show off some of these beautiful pictures they have for us. So, transport your fleet with the Liberary, Liberator Light Carrier. From the Navy's most ubiquitous fighters to the massive warships and large-scale troop and vehicular transport, Anvil is synonymous with space combat and military operations, due in no small part to laser focus on the mission at hand. Anvil continues its tradition of excellence with the Liberator, an open-air vehicle carrier that applies the tradition of long-range transport to smaller scale. Designed with same quantum drive and long-distance capabilities of military spec carriers and pathfinders, but tailored to the civilian market, the Liberator puts your fleet on the front lines of any operation. Go the distance with the Liberator light carrier. So here you can see the landing pads as we make it a little bit bigger here for you. Uh, underneath, it's kind of designed for some vehicles and maybe even, you know, they've got the Argo here. You can fit something bigger there. And on top, you have a Hornet with the wings fully out. Uh, so, yeah, that's a possibility, it looks like, in this mock-up. Long range. Equipped with massive size 3 quantum drive, the Liberator is built specifically for extreme range deployment. Its ability to expeditiously transport smaller short-range ships and vehicles to objectives between star systems makes it an invaluable asset for all manner of industrial, commercial, and combat operations. Uh, I don't really like the way that scales. It's better at the smaller <laughs> pixels. Cargo capacity. A dedicated cargo hold sporting a generous 400 SCU capacity means you can haul traditional freight and tote supplies without sacrificing any vehicle space. This versatility makes the Liberator a favorite of UWC contractors, mining operators of every scale, and pilots and orgs looking to multitask. Uh, so it looks like they've got a Rock DS in here. Uh, what is this? Is it another Rock DS? Yeah, a couple Rock DSs and some cargo plates here for the old cargo weaponry. Should the Liberator be placed in jeopardy, it is capable of defending itself without needing to scramble any fighters on the deck. A manually operated turret sporting potent size 5 laser repeaters, along with a dual automated point defense turrets and four bespoke missile launchers, keep the Liberator and its passengers well protected. We'll kind of get into that a little bit more uh, here in a few moments. And then we have all these different uh, pictures here. Let's start with number one. Uh, this is with the Liberator landed and it's unloading uh, tanks. Now it looks like this is actually coming down from the top deck rather than from the uh, lower deck. So it is two decks uh, as you, you'll see. Uh, now this one is actually coming out the back end from the lower deck. Uh, so pretty interesting uh, that you can possibly, you know, transport vehicles on top and the bottom. So here you have the rear ramp, the forward ramp, you have the crew quarters and bridge. Um, I, I don't know exactly where it is, it just says it's right there. Cargo storage off to the side it looks like. Food dispensers, two beds, there you go. Uh, suit lockers, avionics, vehicle bay access uh, right here. And then you have your man turret with a medium uh, battery life support and the vehicle bay back here and then over here you have another medium battery with a lift uh docking like a docking hatch a bathroom uh four storage lockers six suit lockers landing pad access and eight sto more storage lockers here so it's got a lot armory and a jump room i mean this thing can actually uh beat your uh troop transport your ground vehicle transport you know the C2 and the M2 are designed kind of around that idea 
I think this thing uh, is more... It's built more for that purpose than even the M2. Uh, to me, it just seems like it's better for better suited for that role. Uh, with the jump seats, I mean, the M2 has that, but the M2 doesn't have the same kind of space this thing has available. Now, the problem really lies in that it, it does have an open air canopy area as well, so it is the everything on top is subject to being blasted, right? So uh, just keep that in mind. Of course, this talks about the engineering and you know the other deck, the pilot's quarters, ready room, etc. Uh, plenty of space on this thing, it looks like. Uh, could be a lot of fun having this. Well, again, I want to go into more specifics here in a minute. Uh, but it has the vehicle bay, as you can see. The interior bay accommodates two ground vehicles of any size. Okay, let's pause it. Manually operated turret with the twin size 5 repeaters. Uh, main point defense will be uh, able to ensure interlopers that will think twice before tangling with it. And then the next thing they are highlighting is the landing pads. Open air landing pads accommodate up to three ships simultaneously, while double d the double deck configuration facilitates effortless takeoffs and landings, meaning you can take off and land from this thing uh, without any trouble. There's nothing to have to maneuver into or through, kind of like, you know, with an Idris, you would have to maneuver. The $400, a $400, yeah, wow. 400 SCU of dedicated cargo space. I'm getting ahead of myself. Automated turrets, so the, the point defense turrets are size two, fully automated, and they're capable of taking out incoming projectiles and air space, space debris while staying focused on the mission. Um, I'm wondering if it'll take out ships that get too close. You'd think that would be a possibility. The cockpit, which is off to the side of this thing, gives you a clear view of all three landing pads and make sure that uh, your crew can keep an eye on the passengers while staying on course. So here's the landing pad at the second, or on the bottom floor, and then the other two are up here. So definitely a little different than what you probably expect. And then it's got four bespoke missile launchers capable of also coming to the defense of the ship. So it's very capable of defending itself. There's the docking collar. We've gone through all of them. Uh, so let's talk about specifics here. The technical breakdown. 122 meters long, 68 meters wide, 24 meters tall. So this thing is bigger than a Carrick. That's right. Yeah, a Carrick. Uh, it, it's... it's Good sized. It's very good sized. Three external landing pads, two internal, meaning that it's designed for up to five ships or vehicles. Can it carry more? Of course. We'll get into that in a second, but it's only designed for five. Uh, you, you may have to deal with some weight issues when you start packing in more, which could use more fuel consumption. There's a lot of it only requires two crew, whereas the M2 requires more than that. Uh, so you'll have to have somebody for the man turret and then a pilot, I guess. But, I mean, for a ship this size to only require two crew, that is absolutely insane, if you ask me. That's awesome. So kudos for making a big ship that only requires two crew. Size three shields. Now that's no different than the 400i that came out or the 600i uh, or you know the caterpillar they all have size 3 shields size 3 quantum drive now this is a big difference between it and some other ships out there this is for all intents and purposes nearly a uh, capital size quantum drive uh, this is considered a capital ship in some of the uh, write-ups so you can dispute that because it doesn't have any capital components but CIG are calling it a capital ship, so I don't know. Uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily call it a capital, but if they are going to call it one, I guess we have to go along with that. <laughs> the speed, 115 meters a second, which is not horrible for a ship this size. That's uh, really not that bad. So, what everybody wants to know, before we get into some other things that people want to know. Price. How much does this thing cost? Well, if you're buying it Warbond, all cash, $500. And if you're doing it, you know, it's concierge, you can get the Condor paint job. 
thrown in for free. Uh, if you are not concierge, you don't get the Condor paint job. You just get the ship with the regular gray paint job, which honestly looks better to me. I'm not a big fan of this Condor paint job, personally. If you are upgrading or, uh, you know, using store credits, it's going to cost five seventy-five. dollars uh, You probably won't get lifetime insurance either. Nope, six-month insurance. So the only way to get the lifetime insurance is to do War Bond or to upgrade from an LTI jet. They have some other packs available for it. So if you want the Liberator Fighter Pack or the Liberator Strike Pack, they have a few extras in it. For 720, you can get the Liberator, the Titan, the Arrow, the Hawk, the Cyclone TR, um, Lifetime Insurance, and the VFG Hangar. Now, obviously, it's going to be 820 uh, if you're not using uh, War Bond. If you're not using Real World Cash, you're just upgrading or whatever. If you're, if you're using credits to get that pack. Now, if you want the Liberator Strike Pack. Of course, it comes in War Bond and the regular. $1,050, $1,195. Uh, these are concierge packs. Uh, if you go with it, you get the Liberator, a Hurricane, Gladiator, Ballista, Super Hornet, the Condor uh, Liberator Paint, and Lifetime Insurance. So you get a little bit harder hitters uh, going with that pack right there. Uh, but that is costly. Now you can upgrade it, like I was saying, but uh, you know that's kind of the way I did. I upgraded my M2. I know a lot of other people did as well. Um, yeah, you know I don't blame you one bit. Uh, I think it's a good choice, especially if you have the C2 or the A2, is to go ahead and upgrade the M2 into this ship. Of course, that's a lot of money no matter what. So uh, I would say spend your money wisely. You don't have to spend real world money. Uh, to get the ship, you, you'll be able to get it in-game eventually. So, again, be wise with your spending decisions. So, let's take a look at some pictures, some mock-ups that some other people have come up with. Now, will these fit? Uh, you know, it, I would assume that these pictures are more accurate than some of the others. You can see the Freelancer and the Vanguard fitting oh, so precariously <laughs> on... The top a deck of this Liberator. Uh, this looks like an Argo Mole fitting on top. The Constellation fitting on top. A Drake Caterpillar, probably not the way you're going to fly a Drake Caterpillar. Just saying. That's probably not the best route to go. And then you have tanks. You can fit two tanks on the top. Uh, blast pad, two on the middle pad, two on the front pad. That's a total of six. And then you'll be able to fit at least two more underneath on each pad. Uh, so I'm saying you're probably going to be able to carry 10 tanks here without too much trouble. And now this is an incline of steps. You might be able to fit two more right here. So you could probably fit even more tanks on this thing. Now somebody said uh, in Spectrum, the Liberator what fits by Angle Arc. And he's got some pictures here of some different ships fitting. So arrows, looks like you, or I'm sorry, Scorpius, Scorpions, Scorpiuses, whatever you want to call them, Scorpii. Uh, you can fit four of them on the top deck, according to his math. Now his math is possibly shaky at some point, but you can see the different arrows, I'm sorry, Scorpius again, uh, fitting there with the wings folded up. Move down here, now this is interesting these are all ballistas and that's an incredible amount of ballistas i'm not sure i believe this many would fit comfortably but you see you have one two three four rows of three you're talking 12 ballistas lined up this thing would be uh, a missile forge like nobody would want to mess with this thing with that many missiles especially if uh, whoever's piloting this thing turn the nose down and all the ballistas were aimed at the same target. That would be rather nasty. But you can see they did several mock-ups of these ballistas. They they barely fit on there. I, I don't know. That's kind of crazy. Uh, Banu Defenders, you can fit four according to Angle Arc. 
pretty neat. And it's cool that somebody's actually gone to the trouble to see if these would actually fit in some way. Uh, and again, Argo Moles with, what is that, a prospector down here? So you could have all sorts of mining available right from the, the ship. You know, bring back your goods, drop them off in the storage, go get some more. So that might be a possibility. And then if you're more of the industrial, here's again a prospector. Looks like a, uh, what is this, a vulture? Uh, what else? What else do you call this? Okay, what? Vulcan. Vulcan, vulture, and prospector. There we go. Uh, so that's an interesting mix of ships. Uh, then he has arrows. 21 arrows. That's ridiculous. I... Being able to land them all on here in this much efficiency, yeah, I, my hat's off if you can do that without destroying all of them. Again, what what's the weight going to be? Is this ship going to be able to tolerate that much mass? Uh, especially if you're going into atmosphere somewhere. You know, who knows? Uh, but that's a lot. So, they also have the 400i that just came out. The wings folded up. It might fit. But what do you guys think? Uh, I mean, is this something you want to do? Again, they're showing tanks that you could actually fit three abreast across there and have way more tanks on top of this thing. I don't know if I believe that. That's incredible. Uh, how are you going to fit the... How are you going to... Yeah, park them there. You're talking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24... Not to mention what's down below. So, they're claiming that you can get 39 pumps on this ship. Uh, that's a lot. That That's incredible. I don't advise putting a Starfare on it. So, he did there. You know, Starfare? Yeah, I don't advise that. That's not going to be wise. And then, you can park one Liberator on the top of a Kraken. Again, not something I necessarily would recommend but uh he's shown how you can possibly do that so that is the anvil liberator um obviously you can see some different ways that this could be used or abused personally i think this ship was mostly designed to bring reinforcements to rearm carriers such as your krakens and your idrises uh, hopefully we'll get an anvil carrier other than this eventually or a you know some a battleship or who knows something that's not a light carrier from anvil i like anvil and i think they make tough ships although the last couple of ships that have come out have not been the toughest from anvil so i, I don't know size five guns could be scary that could definitely scare some folks point defense is going to be interesting to see how that works but uh is this thing going to be carrying 39 tanks. I, I really don't think so. Uh, you know, I think you're going to want to use it for a little bit more of a minimal role. Now, it could carry a ton of people, though the life support systems would be on strain. So, again, you'll have to worry about life support. And they didn't really say how much the life support would support. It's built for two people, but obviously they have more people working on this ship. You'll have crews for ships on top of it. So, I mean, it's got to be able to, you know, hold a lot more people. Uh, you know, where, where are the bedrooms? Let's look at the bedrooms. So, lots of storage lockers, dump room. Uh, you know, this thing's got to have more than just what it does. Again, a bathroom there. More bathroom. Uh... I think the quarters were up top. Lockers, bathroom. At least it's got bathrooms everywhere. That's good. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're looking at having the ready rooms. I don't know. I don't know where the bedrooms are. I assume they're somewhere near the lift and all of that. But, yeah, it doesn't really show that. 16 jumpsuit suit, ugh, seats. So that it can carry a lot of troops, it really can. But I, I, yeah, I figure this thing is going to be a fleet support unit or a fleet reinforcement unit, logistical unit uh, that you'll want to protect at all times. You could also use it as a 
landing fleet once the ground has been um, bombed to death by A2s, but once there is a, you know, some sort of a breach on the ground, that safe place to land, you'll bring your liberators in and they will drop off tanks, people, supplies, etc. Uh, they were the, they're kind of the perfect ship for that. I mean, your M2s and the C2s can do that as well, but, uh, you know, the Liberator can kind of do a little more, in my opinion, than the M2. I mean, it's got the capability of ships that fly, which the M2 could put some in there, but it's treacherous at best. And then it also has ground vehicles that you can store underneath, so it can kind of do both. Uh, so what do you guys think of the Liberator? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and hit that subscribe button, please, because a lot of you haven't subscribed yet. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon to let you know when I do more of these videos. Uh, I really do appreciate everybody that's been tuning in. If you'd like to contribute to the channel, you can do that through Patreon or YouTube. That'll be in the information below in the description of the video. Also, if you're looking to join an org, my org is Texas. We are pretty active and uh, a lot of cool folks. You don't have to be from Texas. We can make a Texan out of anybody. You're welcome to join. Make sure you put an application both on our Gilded and the RSI site. That'll both be in the description of the video as well. And, you know, uh, if you're looking to get into the game, and you, of course you don't have to spend that much to do it, you could just uh, buy a little starter pack Use my referral code down below as well. That will get you five, uh, 5,000 credits that you can use towards in-game stuff. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what this thing can really do in the verse eventually. Uh, you guys have any predictions on when we'll see it? It would be interesting to see it in 4.0 whenever that comes out, probably middle of next year or third quarter next year. But I don't think it'll be ready by then. So I'm Mud Dog with the Texas Space Navy. I'll see you out in the verse.